Hello, my name is Luke Sharma, I'm a junior doctor. Can I just ask your name and age, please? Yeah, my name is Tom Sell, I'm 26. How are you like me to call you? Tom Sell. Nice to meet you, Tom. Would it be okay if I asked you to carry an examination of your neck and thyroid? This will also involve you having a look at your hands and your face. Mm -hmm. If at any point I cause any damage to discomfort, please let me know and I can stop. Okay. So I'm just going to comment on the patient, just looking for his clothing and seeing that there is no looseness to the clothing, there is no tightness to the clothing, and there's no inappropriate dress for the seasons. I'm going to wash my hands now. Would we can you just remove your t-shirt for me? Yeah. So I'm just inspecting around the patient, seeing there's no visible treatment adjuncts. Looking at the patient, and now I'm going to have a look at your hands. If you could drop your hands into my hands, if you could turn them over for me. It's feeling the hand, there's no sweatiness or climbiness, and there's no coolness to the hands. So looking particularly at the nail, and see there's no sort of clubbing or thyroid acropatchy. Could you put your fingers together like this for me? And there is no thyroid acrofaction. Thank you very much. If you could hold your hands out like this for me and see that there is no visible tremor. If you could rest your hands by your side for me. So you have a feel of the pulse. The pulse is of normal rhythm and of normal rate of 72 beats per minute. And now I'm just going to have a closer picture of the neck. I'll comment and see that there would be no scars. If there was a lump, I'll comment on its location. I'll comment on its size, its shape, and the color of the lump. Would it be okay if you could stick your tongue out and bring it back in? Seeing that the lump does not move, which would be suggestive of a thyroglossal cyst. If you could just take a sip of water for me and then hold it. And now swallow. Seeing that the lump does not move, which would be suggestive of a goiter. Thank you very much. I'm just going to put this by the side. And now I'm going to have a feel of the lump from behind you. So I'd comment on its consistency, if it's hard or soft, its temperature, if it's warm or cold, feeling for any nodules, seeing if the lump is mobile, or if any skin can be moved over it, and its size and its location. And also listen to the lung. It's very bruise. And I now would like to ask you again to take a sip of water and hold and now swallow. See if the lung moves again on swallowing. Thank you very much. And feel for any lymph nodes in the submental, the subtonsillar, submandibular, preauricular, postauricular, subocipital, postcervical, anterior cervical, infraclavicular, and supraclavicular. And now I'm just going to look from the side of the patient, seeing there's no sort of exothalamus. If you can now follow my finger downwards, seeing there's no lid blank. If you could follow my finger and let me know if you feel any pain or blurred vision. And this would be the result of ophthalmoplegia. I'm going to have a feel of your windpipe now. It might be a little bit uncomfortable. And the trachea is not deviated. It's going to tap on the chest. I think there's a retrosternal expansion. Have a quick look at your shins. I'm going to ask to move them upwards. Seeing the shins that there is no pre tibial myxedema. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for letting me examine your thyroid and neck. Would you like to get back dressed? Thank you. So I'm going to wash my hands again. As this will complete my thyroid examination. I would like to then do a full history. Thank you very much. Thank you.